Hello, everybody. How are you? I am hearing myself somehow. Uh oh. Uh, okay. Welcome uh, to our second to last talk of the day. We have Jay Jacobs, who's going to talk about his uh, his uh, fondness of instant photography and all of the fun things he's done with it. So, take it away, Jay. Okay. Um, hi, I'm Jay Jacobs, and I'm a Crash Base member, and I am also an avid instant photographer in my spare time. So um, in this talk, I'm going to cover different kinds of film and then some of the cameras that you can use and then um, some of the things that you can you can hack film with because, of course, that hacking film is the most fun part. Um, all right, let's see. Let's see if I can do this. OK, so um, here's just a little bit about me. Um, I, I first found um, instant photography when I was a kid um, with, you know, sneaking around with the little Polaroid box cameras. And then when I was in my early teens, um, someone gave me an instant Polaroid, um, a, a land camera, a, a 100, model 100. And um, it was just a whole lot of fun. And um, it was just, it was just super exciting and it was like even more magical because those images are are even larger than what you find in in most integral film because it's peel apart and i'll explain a little bit more about that um peel apart film is a little bit more messy so um sometimes if you're just starting integral film is is a little bit easier to use um and uh, i got back into this around 2012 around the same time that i joined crash base um all right so I want to start with film types, and here we go. So originally there were was peel apart film, and there are a couple of different brands, um, but it was essentially Polaroid that started it, and um, then when Polaroid went out of business, Fujifilm was making some. So you can see in the middle of the picture there, there's uh, um, some Polaroid Type 100 film. And then um, there's an equivalent FP100C on the right, which is Fuji's 100 speed color. And then on the left is the FP3000B, which is a high speed black and white film. Um, I was very partial to that film. Um, Fuji no longer makes those films anymore, but there's a new company in Vienna, um, well, not new company, but a company in Vienna called SuperSense that's making one instant film in, in Europe, and then uh, New 55 is a company here. I think it's on the East Coast in New England. And they use a lot of the 20 by 24 projects. Um, they, they rely on a lot of their film technology. Um, Polaroid is now Polaroid again. It, it, it um, back in, in around 2008, they stopped, um, they, they announced that they were gonna cease making Polaroid film and the impossible project took up the the call to arms to create some new film and um impossible project was around for up until maybe about two years ago and then they bought the intellectual property rights for polaroid and so now you can get fresh film from polaroid the impossible project bought the last polaroid factory that was in enskiddy in the netherlands and you can now get new film Oh, I guess, Barb, can you switch back to me? Um, so this is all, this is all fresh film um, and it's, it's branded Polaroid. Um, and there you can see there's, oops, sorry, wrong way. There's Krogu. So um, for those of you who are Mandalorian fans. Um, and so, um, okay, you can go back to the slide. Um, so you have all these different types of, of peel apart film. Essentially what happens is there's, there's a, a negative and, and a positive and they, they, um, there's a, a film pod and it goes through rollers. And then I'll, I'll show how some of that stuff works a little later um, in terms of it, it basically spreads the developer paste across the negative and then it, it creates a positive image. 
um, depending on which type of film, there are different kinds of hacks that you can use um, for some of the Fuji film to actually get, get negatives out, um, which is pretty interesting. Um, and then for the new 55 film, it, it uses um, usually a four by five back and that you get an, uh, you get both a negative and, and a positive from it. So those are, those are really, really cool technologies too. Um, all right, next. And then, um, okay, so here's, here's the new peel apart film. Um, the new 55 comes in, comes in these nifty little boxes and, and it's a sheet. Um, and basically you, you place the film into the holder and then you flip a switch on it and then you pull it out and expose the, expose the film and it's a, it's a dark slide. And then you push the envelope back in and then um, flip the switch again and then pull the film out. And when you do it that way, there are developer pods on the edges and it, it, it pushes the paste all the way through so that you get your development and then you're supposed to let it, let it develop. And then um, you put it into a fixer bath um, and then water. So um, the new 55 film was designed to be um, used out in the field. And the one instant, you don't have to do anything special to it. You just pull it out of the camera, um, wait, wait the time. I think it's like a minute and 30. I haven't actually tried it yet, but I, I have some packs. Um, so, and, and that's a color film right now, but they're looking at doing some black and white runs as well. So um, that was a really interesting one because they redeveloped the cartridge um, the, the Super Sense guys went all the way out to Fuji in Japan to try and get like the last machinery like Polaroid, or, I'm sorry, Impossible did with Polaroid, but um, they, the, Fuji had already gotten rid of the equipment um, years before. So um, they went about redeveloping the film and the, the Impossible Project film is, is interesting because it only has like eight shots in it and the old Polaroid film had 10. So all of the newer cameras are really only geared towards eight now. Um, but the one instant comes in like three and five packs. So it's not, it's not squished up as much. And, um, but um, the, it's still a work in progress, but it's, it's really exciting because um, it's, the, the format is just really amazing. Um, I have one or two photos to show at the end about that. Um, all right. So um, moving on to integral. So there are two different, well, there, there are two different manufacturers. There's Polaroid and Fuji. Um, Fuji's film is different than Polaroid. It starts out, the frame will start out as white and then will um, eventually uh, the image develops so after about a minute, minute and a half. And then it, it keeps developing for a little bit of time. Um, there really isn't anything that you can do that's, that's hackable with it, but they make three different formats. They make a mini, which is sort of like the size of a credit card. They make a square, which is shown here. And they make a, a wide frame, which is twice the size of the mini. Um, and the square kind of matches sort of a Polaroid, but it's, it's a bit smaller. Um, both of the films are very similar in that they have film pods at the bottom and as the film gets ejected out, um, basically it's spreading, it's spreading the uh, developer paste across the film. Um, Polaroid has two different types. They have um, Polaroid compatible, which is mostly what you see there in the picture on the right, um, as, well as, as well as these two guys. Um, there, you'll also see eye type and, and this one is uh, 600 color. And um, that's for a newer camera. And um, this one is an iType, um, which is for the newest camera. And it doesn't actually have a battery pack in it. Um, when Impossible started doing it, they had a program for recycling your batteries because once you were done with the pack, you didn't really need the battery anymore. Um, but then um, it turns out they're actually lithium ion batteries and they were kind of exploding in planes. So um, you can't really recycle those anymore. Um, which was a little bit of a disappointment. Um, Polaroid does also make a larger size here, the the eight by ten, and I've I've got some examples of that. Um, it just works in a standard eight by ten camera. You expose it like you the film like you normally would, and then it it goes into 
basically an envelope and then there's a Polaroid processor that, that sandwiches it together um, and you'll, you'll see what that looks like um, in a minute. So there's also a third thing that you can do. Um, there are photo printers. Um, Impossible started with one and now, um, is this one? This one's the Polaroid. Um, and it takes, it'll take iType film or Polaroid film. And basically you put your tablet or smartphone on the top, it comes with an app, and then you expose your film. Um, if you're trying to do photos where you're trying to split them across multiple um, sheets of film, then this is a really easy way to do that. Um, here you can see a digital photo that I took of, of the Statue of Liberty and I just cropped it so that it was just, it was just the hand and the torch. And um, it came out really, really nicely. Um, the original photo doesn't look quite like this. Um, but you can see the, the dark colors in the corners. And those are um, called, it's called vignetting. And typically you see that in some of the more toy cameras. Um, but it's a really nice effect here. And it, and it just happened that way. So um, the photo printers are, are kind of cool. And then Instax, um, Fuji makes, makes at least one or two for their formats. Um, so that's also an option. Some of their, some of their cameras, um, the Instax cameras will actually are, are kind of hybrid. So they'll do a digital one. And then they um, use that kind of printer technology to actually print it out on, onto some of the uh, Fuji in, uh, mini film. Let's see, next. Ah, so um, um, I'll show you what some of the cameras look like and they all pretty much have rollers in them. So um, after you're, you're taking lots of pictures, you wanna make sure that none of that, that emulsion paste gets um, out and sometimes it will. So the expression is keep your rollers clean. Um, so sometimes you'll see some artifacts on the film and um, you'll know to go, go look. Um, so here's links to the 20 by 24 studio. They do really large format film and they've got like this big, huge camera that's like the size of a photo booth. And then um, SuperSense um, is, is actually selling some of their pack film and New 55 um, periodically sells things in color and black and white. Um, all right. All right, on to the fun part. So um, cameras. Um, so let's see. So I'm showing mostly Polaroid and, and peel apart cameras here. So um, I, I have a couple of them here with me, but the, the one on the top is a Model 100. And it was the original camera that, that I had when I was growing up and, and it still works and, and it's absolutely great. Um, I, I modified it so it'll take a regular battery. Um, I, think, I think it'll take like a five volt instead of, um, instead of the, the small round battery that Polaroids used to make. Um, and then the, on the bottom right, you can see is is what one of those cameras looks like when it's when it's opened up um, when when the case is opened on it. Um, they all kind of have a clamshell case, um, and they they all pretty much work very similarly. They all have rollers, and and you pull the film out. You can kind of see it there on the um, the big shot camera. That's also a super fun camera because it has a fixed focal length on it, and so. Um, you, you focus with it by move by shuffling your feet back and forth. Um, so you move the camera cl closer or, or away from the subjects. And it's set just right for a single portrait or for two people if they really like each other. Um, the other thing that's really cool about all of these cameras is that they have a light and darken wheel on them. So depending on how your shots are coming out, you can make it brighter or darker and, and adjust it on the fly if you need to. Um, a lot of these cameras were originally designed by, it were, were used by professional photographers to kind of test the lighting conditions and see what was going on beforehand. Um, you don't really need that now with digital. Um, it's kind of gone the other way around where they'll take a digital photo and then actually go and go and get a portrait done. Um, it's become kind of popular in Hollywood, at least um, before the pandemic to go and 
go and get portraits taken. So, um, all right. So, Barb, can you um, zoom in on me now? Great. All right. So, so this is what the Big Shot camera looks like. Um, and basically, um, you fit in one magic cube on the top. And then here's the, the shutter button. And basically, you push down on that. Um, you can see right here the light and darken wheel. Um, you can see which way it goes. Um, so that's, that's cool. So right now, the shutter is closed. And then you just flip this little plastic lever down. Um, and then in the on the back, it's just a really simple, it's got a little timer for exposures. And then um, this little clip here keeps the back on. Um, I won't show this now because it's got film in it, but um, basically you you pull this, you, you take the photo and then you pull this tab out and the tabs have the number of the exposure on it. And then a little right in here, uh, it'll, the film tab will come out and for the actual uh, positive and negative. And you pull that out and that starts your development and then you turn on the timer. Um, let's see. And this isn't the 100 camera, but this is um, a 4, 430 that um, a friend gave me. Um, you can see that, um, let's see if I can fiddle with this. Or maybe not. Let's see. I should have opened this before the show. Well, I'm gonna skip that one. Um, but essentially, um, it works. It works the very same way. Um, and this one also, this one also has some film in it. You can see there's, there's a, a film tab. So um, it's also loaded. So I don't really want to want to empty this one out. Um, but it's got um, everything was numbered, and so um, like there's a button for the two. And um, the ones are labeled for the for the focus levers, um, and then this one has a hot shoe on it. So if you wanted to add a flash for for nighttime photography, um, these are really cool. And and then this one has um, the timer on the back as well. Um, my original 100 just didn't have most of those bells and whistles. Um, this one's a little less expensive than the 100 because the viewfinder is kind of stuck up here. Um, there are two different so, so the way the viewfinders work is um, you use the 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 viewport in the in the middle here, and then um, there are two images that get focused together, and then um, there's a lever for doing the focus. And basically, there are two little circles, and they basically go like this. And and when the two images converge, then you know that everything's everything's in focus. Um, and it's it's a separate it's a separate view. Um, it's a it's a very creative way of doing things, and it's um, it's it's pretty foolproof because um, the that's the focusing is tied in with the actual you know where the, where the lens is. Um, and then um, I've also got some box cameras, which I'll I'll show um, next. So, um, yes. All right, can we go back to full screen, Barb? Cool. All right. Okay, so integral cameras. Um, these are a little, these are less messy. Um, there are more of them. Um, there's, there's the Taz camera right there that I'm showing. Um, they have very similar rollers. Um, so you also have to make sure, you know, for both of them, you need to make sure that they're clean. Um, it's much easier with the integral cameras to clean the rollers. Um, you can't really do that on the peel apart cameras because the backs are kind of sandwiched in there. If you open up the back, then you're going to potentially expose the film. Um, let's see. So um, the other camera that's there is my SX-70 and um, they're, they're really small, and um, if you've ever you if you've never seen one opened, basically you you pop it open, 
from here. And then, and it's it's a twofold thing, and then it clicks into place, and um, that's the camera. Um, you um, when you're holding it, you kind of want to hold it this way when you're when you're looking through the viewfinder. Um, a lot of people try to look through this way, and it, it doesn't. It, that's just not how it was geared. So the idea is that you hold it up a little bit, and um, the thing that's really cool about it is you then can open up the film compartment. Um, oh wait, there's camera. Um, these are the these are the rollers here, um, and yeah, let's see if I can move it. So so there's one big roller, and then there's a smaller one right behind it. And you just need to make sure that um, there's there's no chemical goo on it. And if if it gets some, you just take a little bit of water and, and wipe it off um, with a paper towel. Um, and this is just a really cool camera. It has a glass lens on it. Um, as you can see, maybe um, the the focusing lens actually shows the distance. So um, you use this wheel to fo sorry, this wheel is for lighten and darken, and this wheel is to manually focus it. And then once you've done all of that, you push the red button here to shoot. Sorry, the camera has everything backwards. And then um, if, you, if you wanted to use a flash, there's uh, the flash is up on the top, and you can get LED flashes. There's a company called Mint in Hong Kong. That, that sells LED flashes, so you don't have to worry about trying to find um, the, old, the old flash bars. Um, that was a really cool piece of electronics because you go through about, it, it had five flash bulbs on one side and five on the other. So you put, the, put them in and once all five were shot, you'd flip it over and then use, use those bulbs as well. Um, let's see. Um, and this also has, um, all of these cameras have bellows on them. Um, the, the peel apart ones um, have a more distinct one. Um, and these guys also have, have, a, have a rubber one. The older ones are, are cloth. Um, and then there's, there's a little bar here with a little spot to put your finger in. And that you just push everything down and it's, it's ready to, to travel. So um, those are, are really fun cameras to use. Um, there are sonar versions of it as well. Um, and then um, the more familiar ones that some people know about are, are box type cameras. This this is an iType camera that takes iType film and, um, oh, they changed it for this design. But there is a button on the side where you basically um, push in and then um, the you can see the rollers. There is a film cartridge in it. Um, so I won't take that out, um, but it's, um, and then there was a rainbow in there. So that's like, that's color film. And this particular one is the, the uh, Mandalorian model. Um, and it's got the little um, Mandalorian symbol on the back. And um, it takes iType, so you have to charge it. And there's a, a USB, um, Port right there to charge it with, and then it has two little um, windows right here to tell you um, what mode it's in and um, uh, how many more um, shots of film. Let's see if I can turn this thing on. Oh, oh there we go. All right, so. So it's lit up here, so you can see where the connector is that's green. And then um, here you can see it's charging the flash, and there are four exposures left. So it starts with eight and counts down to let you know how much you have. Um, and the flashlight's on, so it's it's ready to go. Um, these are really cool. These are really nice cameras if you just want um, people who've never really used them before. Um, and um, they're really good for um, um, just taking portraits of people. Um, this one is one that a friend gave me. It's actually a Polaroid talking camera. Um, and basically the way that they open up is um, here, you just open them that way. 
and then you're you're basically ready to go. Um, when you look through this lens, unlike so the SX70 is an SLR camera, so single lens reflex, and these are not SLRs. You're just looking through the viewfinder. The the old Polaroid peel apart cameras are kind of a combination, and so um, these are really cool because you just look through and um, um, and then just hit the button right here. Wait for the button to go. Yeah, and then it'll it'll take the photo. Uh, this one doesn't have film in it. I think. Yeah. Um, so what made this one really cool is that um, you could record your voice. It's got a small microchip in it, and um, you you could record something cute or distracting to make someone smile, like a bad joke. Um, it also has a light and darken feature, but it's right here. So you move it one way or the other to lighten and darken it. Um, I'm trying to think if there was anything else. Um, you can also, um, if you push down halfway, it'll, it'll do its focusing. That's um, also another feature. So, um, so this is, Another cool camera, um, especially with the black and white film, it 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 really can produce some some amazing pictures. Let's let's go back to the presentation. Um, all right, so I've also shown some of the Fujifilm cameras. So the um, the two cameras in the middle are um, Mint cameras, and what Mint did was they completely redid the camera and created a new circuit board, and um, where the flash normally went. You've, you've got like what they call a time machine dial. So you can manually set all of the, the features. So like you can set it for, for aperture or um, um, speed or whatever you're looking for. So it gives you manual control over the camera or you can, you can fix it for a particular speed. Like if you're using um, um, the old SX-70 cameras run at about 125 ISO and the new ones are about 600. So um, uh, you can configure the camera so that it'll automatically do the right exposure for, for, for the right film type. Um, so you just need the one camera and you can use anything that you want. Um, the, the camera that's right next to it is a, a TLR, a twin lens reflex. And that one is really cool because you look down into it and there's a focusing lens on the top. And then the lens right below it is the actual taking lens. And um, it uses Fuji Instax Mini film, um, so you're going to get smaller ones, and they and they pop out. Um, and then the camera right next to it in pink is also a Fuji a Fuji film uh, camera as well. That's an Instax Mini with that film popped out. Um, and then there's I've got on the right hand side on the top is an Instax camera, but for the wide film, um, that's, that just seems to be how they like to do it, where the viewfinder's kind of off to the side, off to the side there. Um, and then Lomography makes some really cool um, instant cameras as well. They're all range finders, so you have different focusing zones in them, and typically they'll have like two or three lenses in them, so you're switching between them. Um, and this particular camera that's shown there is, I think, one of their one of their automats. It their bellows swing out, so um, when you're folding that camera up, it also folds flat. But um, the the bellows kind of fold in, and the lens comes around to the side. Um, it's also a really nice camera because when it closes, it automatically closes up the lens, so you don't you don't have to worry about that. Um, oh, and then. Um, I showed a little circuit board there. There is a project called the Open SX70 project, and they've been working on their own Arduino controller that basically replaces um, the the camera itself um, with with a new um, with new sensors, and um, it's it's actually really cool. And um, they have another they have a very similar controller gizmo, similar to um, what what Mint has done, except that this is a completely open source project. All right, let me go back to my charts. We're almost done. Now we're on to the fun part, the hacks. Um, 
there are all sorts of things that you can do with it. Um, lens kits, skins, um, open SX70, like I just mentioned, and then frog's tongues. Um, basically, the, the box cameras already have a frog's tongue built in, um, and you may not see it, but basically the impossible and Polaroid film, the new version, is somewhat can be somewhat sensitive to light in bright areas. So they created a new frog's tongue for it, and basically um, you can take the part, camera apart and um, put the frog's tongue, uh, replace the frog's tongue and put a new one in for the box camera. Or they actually make one that kind of slides in and inserts onto the SX-70. Um, let's see. Um, these two cameras were kind of cool. Um, the one here um, in the bottom middle was was um, came reskinned. Um, I was having trouble with the camera on the on the left, which I had um, done the skin for my myself, and it had a light leak, and I didn't realize it until like about a week and a half before Maker Fair. So um, I just went and got a new camera um, that was pretty inexpensive at the time. So um, you can you can get all sorts of custom skins. Um, the old, it was a synthetic leather called Porver that most of the cameras have. Um, and it's actually pretty easy to pull, pull the old skin off. And um, basically it's kind of messy, but basically you take a hairdryer and you heat up the glue and the stuff pretty much just pulls right off. Um, it's it's a pretty easy process, and then um, you you can reskin them. And here I've got like some. This is an example of a a, a crocodile print. Um, you can you can find them on eBay now for a lot for a lot less. This particular one came from from Japan. Um, that was a lot of fun. The other things that you can do are um, mounting lenses and have lens mounts. There are different people who have um, different kits. This one came from Shapeways, but um, there are, are things that you can even get off of Fingerverse. So if you're good with a 3D printer, like I am, you can, you can also um, print something as well. Um, and this is kind of an interesting lens mount because it's actually got a little hood on it. So um, to try and um, keep some of the light out. Um, in, in bright daylight. All right. Um, there we go. So um, integral film, um, you can you can do manipulations and emulsion lifts and transparencies. Um, I thought I'd show you the manipulations. Um, you can sometimes do it with some of the impossible film um, and certain types of the old Polaroid film. Um, the newer film doesn't do it as well, but you can see this is just a really fascinating art technique. Um, basically, you just press down and it it, it will slowly um, change things into making it more like a drawing. Um, the one on the right here is really interesting because he left, um, these are, all three of these are from a, a friend of mine, Toby. Um, and basically here he leaves the sky alone and then he does the manipulation on on different parts of things like the signs and and um the, the the street light so it's it's really really cool um all of the the impossible and the new polaroid film you can do emulsion lifts on um you usually have to do it you can do it like a day later or two to three days depending on the type of film whether it's black and white or color um, and that basically you pull the frame apart and then, um, pull the backing off and then basically put it into a water bath and with a paintbrush, you can, you can slowly, you brush off some of the extra paste that's on there. And then the, the film itself is actually an emulsion. So it'll, it'll basically come off and then you can lift it and then put it on, um, paper or any other organic surface. So um, one of my friends likes to do, James likes to do um, wood lifts and they're really spectacular. All right. Um, peel apart. Peel apart, um, there's not too much that you can do with it. Um, with the black and white, you get a black and white negative. And if you're very careful with it, you can scan the negative in. Um, that's kind of nice because then you can give the photo to whoever you took the picture of, and then as a photographer, you can 
you can then take the photo home and you, you still have a copy of it. Um, for some of the, the Fujifilm, the 100C, um, you can also basically tap it, tie it down and um, use bleach. And here's an example, um, I'm at the beach in San Clemente at the pier. And um, I, this was like my first attempt at doing it. And you can see there's a little bit of bleach that kind of got in here on the top and the bottom. But um, this is all from the negative and it, it, it came out really nice. Um, so there are interesting things that you can do with that. And, and it's, um, you know, and then, then it was, I just used um, a photo program to, to do the inversion. All right. Um, so the impossible film and, and Polaroid now um, do, depending on the kind type of film, have artifacts. Um, so here you can see some of them. Um, these are kind of like ferns here. Um, you can see them differently in other spots. Um, this particular film, it was cold. This was in Philadelphia in the winter time. So there were some spots that kind of showed up as well. Um, and then in the middle here, this part is called a divot. Um, and so you'll sometimes see those. And then um, basically what happens is the paste just doesn't quite make it all the way all the way through. And so that's that's where the divots come from. Um, some of them, if it's older film, the, the paste doesn't spread very well. And it can be up to up to half of the, the picture. Um, fresh film usually doesn't give you that kind of problem. The other thing that happens is pore potting. If you've ever looked at a, a piece of Polaroid film, there are like three different three little pods on the back. And um, pore potting is when it doesn't mix properly. And you can see it here. There's like a line right here. And there's a line right here. Um, it doesn't always happen that way. It could be like one third, two thirds, or like you're seeing there where it's like three different, three different spots. Um, but those are kind of the, the three main things. Um, lots of people are able to get really interesting photos that, that still have a divot like this one here of, of Independence Hall in Philadelphia. So it, it kind of adds to the, to the work. All right. Um, I just wanted to talk a little bit more about the photos themselves. Um, so here's what an eight by 10 looks like. Um, basically it goes through this big film processor and, um, that's, that's, probably like about that big and that big, well, it's eight by 10, um, a little bit larger. Um, and sometimes you'll get a divot in it and, and sometimes you won't. So there, there was one example. Um, the four by five film is a little bit more intriguing. Um, you can see here, um, this was old. So there's new 55 and that's based on Polaroid's old type 55 film. So here are some photos of me that were, that were taken that way. Um, you can see um, they're they're pretty cool and and nice and black and white. Um, and then um, here, um, there's also um, some people like to do things um, without flash, so it's it's a long exposure in many cases. Um, the two film or the two photos on the right use FP 3000 B film. And so it's 3000 speed. So um, it just shot normally and um, it, it comes out really great in indoor lighting. So this was in a gallery. So here you can see someone familiar um, looking at a flip book. This was from our, our last Crash Base art show. So I just kind of wanted to sneak those in there. And then um, oh, um, the picture on the left is the dunk tank flambe. Um, so it was like a dunk tank, but instead of um, getting dumped into water, a, an inferno of flames came up with a person who was wearing it in an asbestos suit, essentially. Um, so that was that was a lot of fun to watch. All right, and um, here we are at the end. Um, and just when I mentioned the camera before and light leaks, um, these light leaks came from from that camera and. Um, you don't necessarily want those intentionally, but but that's that's what the light leaks look like. So, um, with that, I have finished my talk. So, um, 
Barb, do you have any questions? It says stop. It's like that's 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 the uh, this is the end. Stop. Don't stop at the beginning. Stop at the end. Yeah, no, that's great. Thanks for that. Like you're the person who I know who knows the absolute most of anything about uh, all of this instant photography stuff. Uh, that's, which is not to say that you're the person who knows most, because you there's some uh, there's some communities of uh, instant photography buffs. It's it's a really ingenious community, and there are lots of people doing really interesting things, and I've just enjoyed it. Um, I fell into it going on a Polaroid walk, and um, it was just cool because I had like two different. I had like one integral film camera and one peel apart. And like people were just pulling out all sorts of cameras and I just felt like it was like walking into crash base for the first time where it was like, ah, these are my people. <laughs> Very cool. Yeah. And just like get together and have like photo taking parties and stuff. Well, in the before times. Yeah. So we used to like to do um, photo walks. Um, downtown LA was, was very popular because there was always something to see out there. And um, we would just, we would walk around for a couple of hours. And then when we were all tired, we would just go to a pub or burger joint and sit down and just spread our photos out on the tables and start looking at what everyone had taken a picture of. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, have you gotten to do, have you done much photography like in this last year? No. I don't know no. Too much. No, you're not. I, you're not like just taking still, still life of, uh, of fruit. No, I just I. Um, it's a combination of just time and, um, yeah, not, not really being that comfortable outside yet, but hopefully soon. I'm sure when you do it, you'll just like you'll walk outside with the camera in the chair. pictures flying everywhere. Um, yeah, um, the, the Fuji film is kind of an interesting one because you can pretty much get the film anywhere, but it's really high speed, not high, really high speed, but it's, it's an 800 speed film. Mm -hmm. So um, if you're gonna take it through x-rays, that's like the limit of them. So you, you probably only wanna fly with it once or maybe twice, um, but you can pretty much get it anywhere these days so yeah well very cool uh thank you yeah thank you for your talk if you anybody wants to see um some of jay's work he uh has a room the polaroid gallery is just to uh just to the right of the uh what it's it's if you're sitting at the stage turn right it's right there uh and there's also, because uh, you mentioned the transparencies, there are some of your transparencies in one of the videos uh, that is upstairs in the dark room. So yeah, thank you a lot for talking, for, for talking about this. Uh, up next in about 15 minutes at six o'clock, we have Muriel Grace doing our next talk uh, called A Brief and Non-Comprehensive Look at Protest Songs and Art in Our Modern Time. So that should be fun. Back. Yeah. It'll be great. It will. All right. Uh, have fun. See you back here soon. <laughs>